All right. Good evening, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to the City of Hermantown Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for April 12, 2022. It's currently seven o'clock in the evening. We're going to begin with a roll call of members. Uh, Corey Colquist here. Valerie Olette here. Samuel Clark here. Beth Wensloff here. Buckley Simmons here. Dante Tomasoni here. And John Geiser is coming in remotely, correct? That is correct. Thank you, sir. Second this evening is the approval of this evening's agenda. Can I get a motion on that, please? I move to approve tonight's agenda. We have a first. Can I get a second? Someone's to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Number three this evening is the approval of the minutes from the March 15th, 2022 regular meeting. Can I get a motion on that, please? I'll move to approve. Thank you for that. Can I get a second? Thomas, only second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much for that. Uh, fourth up this evening is public discussion. Is there anybody here to speak on anything that's not on this evening's agenda? Sir, if you could come on up, state your name and address for the record, please. We'd appreciate it. Uh, my name is Tony Marino, uh, 3760 Johnson Road. And I'm here to talk about the planned unit development for the Keens Creek. Um, I watched with uh, uh, a lot of joy when I saw Jay Zierden come up to the city council meeting on March 21st and stated that he was going to be submitting a new plan uh, for approval by the city. And I'm assuming that's going to be coming before this committee before it goes to the council. And in his plan, he's going to be eliminating the uh, Carlson Road connection to the Johnson Road and putting in a, a ham, hammerhead design at the north end of the Keene Creek Road. Um, I didn't know what that was, so I've done a little bit of research on it. And it, it's a great example of a developer working with a neighborhood to meet their needs. You know, the Johnson Road is narrow. Um, it's not designed to support the extra traffic. But the hammerhead design works extremely well with what our neighborhood would like to see. And that's for the Parks and Recreation Department to move a section of trail, uh, the multi-use trail that's designed from there and use um, the Carlson Road uh, section and connect it right through the hammerhead and right onto the north-south section. Um, all we need now is the city to work with it, and we've got a win-win-win for everybody. Our neighborhood would be enhanced with a nice access to the trail um, that could be used as an emergency entrance um, into the hammerhead uh, if necessary. Um, it's just, I, I was just really glad to see Jay Zierden take, take this stance. He listened to what we've been saying. And, and also not only what we've been seeing, but I think he took a second look at the Johnson Road because he even mentioned it, that he didn't feel that the Johnson Road was um, up to shape for adding, adding this other road to it. So anyhow, I just hope that the city through this committee and eventually through the city council would uh, just take all this in and uh, look favorably on us. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, we haven't seen anything yet, but as soon as we do, we'll take a look at it. Either I, I just, like I said, googling it. I, I, we had talked to him numerous times about putting a cul-de-sac in there at the end, you know, to be able to come across it. With his resources and knowledge of developments, you know, he came up with the hammer handle or hammerhead design, yep. and it, it just blew my mind. It was just, it's just a perfect fit in my opinion, I'm, I'm not an engineer, but I lived in the neighborhood since 1976. And it's just a perfect fit for our neighborhood and, and the community itself. Well, we'll gladly take a look at it when, it when and if it comes before us. Yeah, I'm guessing it'll be next month. So cool. I'll be back. Very cool, sir. Thank you for your time tonight. And actually, if I could follow up with that, uh, we are working with the uh, developer's engineer, uh, expecting uh, submission to come in sometime this week. And assuming that does, that would fall into the uh, May 17th planning and zoning meeting and then be at the June 6th uh, city council meeting. And just for the members of the audience, uh, planning and zoning and, uh, and applications like this is a recommending board. They're not approving board. 
the city council is the um, the actual uh, group that would take action on it, an application in that case. So uh, like I said we're expecting that uh, probably come in next couple of days and looking at uh, potentially a May 17th meeting for that. Thank you for that, Eric. Uh, again, we're uh, on the public discussion section of our meeting this evening. Is anybody here still want to speak on something that's not on this evening's agenda? Not seeing any, we'll move forward to 5A. It's an application by ATK Enterprises Inc. for a planned unit development for the construction of a 60 by 202 storage building and a 40 by 104 storage building to be located at 4540 Norway Pine Place. The property is located in a C1 office light industrial zoning district. Eric, what do you have for us on this one this evening? I'm uh, bringing up the graphics associated with that. So uh, what we have this evening, this is a uh, basically a continuation of a planned unit development that had been approved back in 2020. Uh, this is a six and a half acre property located at 4540 Norway Pines. Uh, once again, back in uh, 20, a PUD for preliminary and final was approved at that time for the construction of two buildings on that property. Uh, what I'm showing here, this is uh, the map of uh, basically what has been done already. It's these two buildings. Uh, the applicant has also uh, constructed the driveway into the property, paved around these buildings and constructed the detention pond for that. Uh, that detention pond uh, was sized, not only for the work that had been installed at the time, but also uh, future work, which is coming before us this evening. So what the applicant is looking for this evening is a, once again, a, another preliminary and final PUD for the construction of two more buildings. Uh, one would be a 60 by 202 foot building located in this area right here. The other one is a 40 by 104 foot building that's located in this section right there. So uh, what we're looking for this evening is um, basically a recommendation or guidance from this group on the planned unit development for these two particular buildings here. Um, their pavement would be extended to those two buildings. So this continue to be a paved site that way. Uh, once again, the pond is already in place and has been sized for this proposed work that's before us this evening here as well. Uh, the one thing that uh, the applicant is requesting is in lieu of the 40 foot rear yard setback along this area right here, they're requesting a 30 foot rear yard setback. What that allows is you get some more room between uh, the existing building and the proposed building to the north, just for people to uh, get in and out of those bays and just well for um, just care and maintenance of it from a snow removal standpoint that way. Uh, the buildings are proposed to be similar in design, the ones that are already existing in place. And that's shown on the screen right here. Uh, once again, these are uh, essentially mini storage products. They are going to be for rent. There's not any ownership uh, envisioned for those. Uh, once again, the owner, um, Andy Klatsky of ATK Storage, he will be the sole owner, owner of this and is the applicant this evening. Uh, the property to the north that uh, the applicant is looking for the reduced setback, that is owned by the city of Duluth, uh, really in coordination with the, uh, the airport land up there. So I uh, don't really anticipate that that land ever being built on from a development standpoint. Thank you for that, Eric. Uh, commission members, any uh, questions on this so far this evening? Eric, does airport zoning come into play at all? Not on this site, it just falls within the C zoning. Okay. And what that is, is that's strictly a height thing. Eric, Sam. Just for clarification, since the plan unit development was already approved, what's the purpose of this second? When we approved it uh, initially, we had a stipulation that any future phases need to go through the process again. Because originally at that time, the applicant was looking at the idea of um, potential condoing out of the future building that he could sell off a unit to a person to buy. And in that case, um, there was something new to the city. And we thought at that time, the best way to control that is through a planned unit development. So honestly, if this would have, uh, if the applicant would have come in this evening with a, a standard setback of the 40 feet versus a 30, it would have fallen under a special use permit. 
So uh, really the only trigger of the PUD this evening is the, is the decreased setback of 10 feet. Okay. Commission members, any other questions for Eric before we uh, open it up for the applicant? Is anybody here this evening representing the applicant? Could you come on up, state your name and address for the record? Tell us a little bit about what you got going on back there. Hi, James. James with APK. Um, exactly what you said. You stated exactly what it's going to be. Uh, our only request is for the additional 10 feet uh, of setback um, to increase our space between the buildings so for maneuverability and so forth. Um, they have changed from our concept of doing condos to uh, the rented space. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's a 202 by 60 by 16 foot tall. Uh, the height is going to be very similar to the other buildings as they stand. And um, that is pretty much it. Commission members, any questions for James this evening? Are, are these buildings open to any kind of storage, cars, boats? Yes. Lawn, furniture, whatever. Yep. Anything? Yes. Oh. Thank you very much. We'll let you know if we have any other questions. Thank you. We'd like to open uh, 5A up for a uh, public discussion this evening at 7-11. If anybody's here to speak on this matter, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Not seeing anybody coming up, we will close the public hearing at 7.12 p.m. Commission members, any other questions or comments on 5A this evening? Not hearing any, I look for a motion, please. Mr. Chair, I motion to approve agenda item 5A as stated. Thank you very much. Can we get a second? Winslow, second. Thank you for that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Not hearing any, the motion passes. Thank you very much. We're gonna move on this evening to 5B. It's an application by Porter Business Development LLC for a rezoning of a two acre parcel located at the Southeast intersection of Stebner Road and Arrowhead Road. The parcel is currently zoned P for public, which is a with a proposed rezoning to C commercial. Eric, what do you have for us on this one? Thank you. Uh, this property is um, two acres of the overall 74 acre property associated with 4798 Miller Trunk Highway. Uh, this is the existing Sunrise Cemetery there. Um, back in 2019, uh, the applicant Bart Porter of uh, Porter Development had approached the city about uh, potential rezoning of this uh, corner site, these two acres here. This is the intersection of Stebner and this is Arrowhead Road. Uh, at that time, uh, the applicant was really just looking to rezone the easterly uh, one acre of this property. Uh, at that time, um, it was not approved by the city council due to the fact that it would have been construed as spot zoning. There was not an adjacent commercial land use uh, to that particular property. Uh, we had said to the applicant at that time, if he would ever come forward with a two acre property, what he's doing today, in that case, he then abuts into that commercial land uh, located up to the north and west. So at that point, uh, since it's contiguous zoned property, that uh, it would at least meet the requirements from a zoning standpoint. Uh, so as I had mentioned, this is uh, two acres uh, in the corner of this property. Uh, right now, it's essentially a green field. If you drive by it, it's um, some boulders, things like that in there. But for the most part, it's, it's pretty well graded out that way. Uh, the applicant is envisioning two one-acre properties that he has been in discussion with some potential medical-based users uh, within that area. As of right now, uh, there's no formal application that's come through for the use of those two properties. Uh, if it did so, it would come back to the planning and zoning as a commercial industrial development permit. And at that point, um, the PNZ would be able to um, review that and then they would take action at that point. 
as a commercial industrial development permit only requires planning and zoning approval. It does not require city council. So this evening, all that we're looking at is the uh, rezoning of the two acres in that uh, corner as shown on the screen in the yellow there from the P public to the C commercial. Thank you for that, Eric. Commission members, any uh, questions or comments for Eric on this so far? Not hearing any, are we, uh, does the applicant happen to be here this evening? Sir, do you have anything you wanted to say to us or walk us through this? Yeah, if you wanna come up, please state your name and address for the record and uh, give us a little rundown on what you got going on here. I own Sunrise Funeral Home Cemetery and Porter Business Development. Uh, been looking at this piece and uh, I finally had, uh, I actually have two dentists approach me. One's an oral surgeon and one's a regular dentist. So um, I already got them both pretty much under contract. So if we get approved, then they're going to move forward probably with the process. One's already got a design going on a building. The other one's working on it. So they're ready to uh, pay Herman Town some tax dollars. <laughs> so um any questions for me but uh uh i think i think it's going to be a nice addition to that corner yeah i agree i drive through there quite a bit all right commission members any questions for this gentleman all right thank you very much sir We'll move forward with a public hearing on 5B. It's currently 7.16 in the evening. Is anybody here to speak on this matter this evening? If you are, please come up to the microphone and state your name and address. Not seeing any, we will close the public hearing at 7.17 this evening. Commission members, any other questions or comments for Eric this evening? Not hearing any, any discussion this evening? Then we look for a motion on 5B, please. Uh, well, that I would move to approve uh, 5B. Thank you for that. Can we get a second? Simmons, a second. Thank you for that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Not hearing any, the motion passes. Thank you very much, sir. second uh, city council agenda. Thank you for that, Eric. Moving forward with 5C this evening, it's a petition to change the street name of EV Drive to Stevie Drive. This road intersects Richard Avenue and Haynes Road and is located in the Hermantown Marketplace. Eric, what do you have for us on this one? Great, thank you. Uh, the city has been approached by an applicant um, to uh, potentially rename this roadway that exists from Haynes Road over to Richard Avenue. Uh, this is a small stub of road that uh, right now uh, provides some access over to uh, Sam's Club and as well as uh, some of the development that's been happening uh, in this lower corner of the site on the Haynes Road, Maple Grove Road area here. Uh, the applicant had approached uh, the surrounding businesses there and uh, the four properties that abut that roadway signed a petition uh, stating that they were in um, at least concurrence or support of the renaming of that road from EV Drive to Stevie Drive. So um, assuming that there is a, a recommendation from this board, this would go to city council for that. Um, the, the city has reached out to the 911 addressing system. Uh, they do see no issues with this as there are no current buildings that take addressing off of EV Drive today. So um, it would not affect anybody from a, a business addressing standpoint. And once again, 911 uh, is, is okay with this potential change that way. Perfect, thank you for that, Eric. Commission members, any questions or comments for Eric this evening? I just read that um, all the expenses are for the road signs and stuff are not part of the city's cost, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Any other questions for Eric this evening before we open it up for a public discussion? 
Not seeing any, we'll open up a public discussion at 7.20 this evening for 5C, the petition to change the name of EV Drive. Is anybody here to speak on that matter this evening? Not seeing any, we will also close the public discussion at 7.20 this evening. Commission members, any other questions or comments this evening? We're gonna look for a vote on 5C. I will be abstaining from this this evening as well, just so everybody's aware of that. Mr. Chair Colquist, I move to approve agenda item will be 5C as stated. Thank you for that. Can we get a second, please? Thomas Sony, second. Thank you for that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Once again, I'm abstaining. Motion passes. 5D this evening is a zoning ordinance text amendments by the city of Hermantown amending the text of the Hermantown zoning code and adopting zoning maps establishing an airport zoning overlay safety zone within the city of Hermantown. Eric, what do you have for us on this one? Great, thank you. Um, what we have this evening is the Joint Airport Zoning Board, which is also known as JASB, for the Duluth International Airport, uh, created an airport overlay in 1988. Uh, the overlay relates to properties adjacent to runways three and nine within the city. And its purpose is to protect the public health, safety, and for the promotion of the most appropriate use of land in order to prevent the creation or establishment of airport hazards. So I'm gonna flip back and forth between a couple maps. Uh, as I had mentioned, um, we have, this is what you're seeing here is runway three with safety zones coming off that. And then this is runway nine, which is on the uh, west side of the airport. So in 1988, the ordinance implemented uh, the requirements. It was, requ it was basically per the state law, the reason that um, that was implemented. Uh, JASB, of which Hermantown is a member, has been discussing for a number of years its desire for a change in the law to allow each airport to create custom zoning for its airport. The state law was amended in 2019 and permits custom zoning for each airport to better integrate airport zoning with the local zoning and planning processes. Uh, custom zoning also allows for increased flexibility for an airport to enact airport zones that are appropriately sized for each airport's needs. After numerous discussions and revisions, the JASB approved an airport zoning ordinance reflecting custom zoning in August 20 of 21, and the Minnesota DOT approved that JASB ordinance in October of 21. As part of this JASB zoning ordinance, each member community is required to adopt applicable sections of the ordinance as an overlay to its zoning code, once again, as an overlay. Each local community is responsible for the enforcement of that JASB zoning ordinance and the requirements of the overlay district. The JASB zoning ordinance is not retroactive to existing uses. So if you exist there today, you'll continue to exist moving forward. Hermantown recognizes the importance of a regional airport to our community and in the interest of protecting the public health, safety and general welfare of our residents, the city is proposing to enact an airport zoning overlay as part of the Hermantown zoning code. Uh, there are four safety zones established in the JASB ordinance um, that are proposed to be established as the overlay district for Hermantown. Uh, what I'll do is I'll briefly describe each one of these and where the maps in, uh, are applicable, I'll show those as well. So safety zone one, uh, on this current map, what you see, that's the blue area. And once again, this is runway nine. This is runway three. So this land, um, it was formerly known as a zone A. Uh, what it does in that zone, it prohibits buildings, temporary structures, and is generally utilized as open space, agricultural uses or parking. Uh, the vast majority, if not all of this land is publicly held either by the airport or uh, the city of Duluth, or in a few cases, uh, city of Hermantown. Uh, but once again, um, they're essentially publicly held and there's no development on those currently. Safety zone two, which is currently shown on the map here, that has been formally known as the B zone. Uh, what that, in, within that zone, it prohibits buildings and structures where groups of people can congregate. Uh, some specific uses include churches, restaurants, movie theaters, 
banquet halls, stadiums, schools, hospitals, hotel motels that way. Uh, in addition to these use, these uses, each use shall not create, attract, or bring together a site population of in excess of 20 people per acre. So assuming you have a two and a half acre site, in theory, you could not have 50 people congregating on that site at one time. Um, and each site uh, must be a minimum of two and a half acres in size. Uh, the shape of this zoning district, uh, for the most part, exactly mirrors what is out there today. The only exception being was a zoning cleanup in this area that I'm pointing to on the screen. It notches out and it follows the existing property line of the, um, the uh, vacant property at Highway 53 and LeVake Bypass. It's known as the Bill and Irv site. Uh, it's currently a vacant site that way. Uh, under the uh, basically the previous uh, requirements of the airport zoning, um, it, it stipulated that properties needed to be a minimum of three acres in size, and it capped the, um, the resident congregation at 15 per acre. So this new ordinance and the new overlay essentially uh, lessens that. Once again, it goes from a three acre minimum to a two and a half acre minimum, increases the number of people per acre from 15 to 20. And as I mentioned previously, any uses that currently exist within there can continue to stay within there. For instance, uh, there's an existing church within there that uh, you could not build a new one under the ordinance the way it is, but the church can continue to exist as it is today. Going back over to runway three right now. So this is a zone that's similar in size to what exists today, but has been re-envisioned. Um, this area had a combination of some B zoning as well as B zoning with C restrictions. So in that case, the uh, movie theater, um, the bowling alley, et cetera, uh, were, uh, were allowed uses within that zoning district the way it previously was. Um, in this zone 2.5, Obviously, as I said, these are existing conditions. They continue to stay that way. Um, this was one question or one comment that the city received, not the city, but JASB received back from the DOT is they wanted to see some sort of a zone that at least helped protect vulnerable populations. So i.e. it was uh, children, uh, people under daycares, whether it's children or adults, hospitals or schools that way. Um, essentially, if, if you were there and not under your own free will, they, they wanted to protect you under that original JASB ordinance as it has been enacted. So as part of this, uh, JASB uh, agreed to this zone 2.5 uh, with some minimal restrictions or prohibited uses. And what those are are child or daycare centers, state licensed residential care facilities, and housing with services establishing establishment serving seven or more people, state licensed adult daycare serving 13 or more persons, state licensed group homes or family daycare serving 13 or more children, a public or private school or a public or private hospital. So once again, this is um, essentially uh, less restrictive than what had been previously allowed. And once again, continues to allow the existing uses there to function as they are. Lastly, uh, there's the safety zone three, which a good portion of our city falls under. And what that is, it's uh, essentially, it's a one to one and a half mile radius out from each runway. And the only restrictions within that C zone are height restrictions. So it's uh, 150 feet above the highest point within the usable runway area. So um, if, a, if you fall under that C zone, essentially you can't build a 150 plus foot height house. So uh, generally does not fall into it. The question I get quite a bit is the new apartment that was constructed there at uh, Ugstead Road and Highway 53. Uh, people say, well, how does that fall under that struct that that is well under that airport zoning height restrictions oh, that way. Sure. So just to give people a little bit of a visual that way. So the cities of Hermantown and Rice Lake are also uh, talking and requiring the city of Duluth to indemnify them about any claims or damages uh, from the result of this adoption of the airport ordinance. Uh, that information will go forward to the city council at a future date. But uh, right now we're just looking at this new airport zoning 
within the city of Hermantown's code. Thank you for that, Eric. Commission members, any questions or comments on this so far? Uh, Eric, so under, you said under zone one or zone two, any existing businesses, they can stay, is that also 2.5 and three? That is correct, yes. So what happens if the movie theater decided to sell? Could someone go in there and repurpose that or does that have to maintain that business moving forward because it would be changing then it could be repurposed for any of those uses as long as it did not fall under those prohibited items so it could not be repurposed as a hospital could not be repurposed as a school uh, could it become another movie theater yes it could uh, could it become top golf yes it could but it could not once again become a daycare um, assisted living hospitals things of that nature uh, actually, I will say one more thing is one of the question, one other um, comment that had been discussed was uh, the ability to have medical clinics within the 2.5. And yes, those can happen. You know, if it's a um, chiropractor, uh, dental office, uh, medical office, those are fine. Once again, it, as long as it's not a hospital, they're trying to prohibit a hospital with ICUs or some nature of that. So um, getting back to your question, yes, that could be repurposed for a number of different things assuming it all falls within the c zoning of the city as well i do have one question that i'd like to get a little clarification on you mentioned earlier about a church that couldn't be built today can it be rebuilt if there's a catastrophic like a fire there I'd have to consult that a little bit further to tell you the truth, Joe. Um, I don't have that answer off the top of my head. I don't think that would change how we're looking at things this evening, but I'm just kind of curious on sure. that matter. That is that is a good question. And um, I think that's something that I'll you know, look a little bit further into this ordinance that way. I would appreciate that. Thank you. I have a question. The southern border of zone one, did that change at all from what it was? No, it did not. Okay. That mirrors what is there today. Okay. So uh, looking at that zone one, do any of those structures that are on the south side of that property there, that are those all fine as well? Yes. Everything that basically what we'll call the Gordy's complex mm -hmm. and there's that small office. Yes. Those all fall within that zone 2.5. Commission members, any other questions or comments for Eric before we open it up for public discussion? I just have one more. So what does the process look like moving forward here? So moving forward, uh, once again, this is part of this. Um, we wanted to have a public hearing, obtain uh, comments, questions from not only this board, but the public. Uh, we would look for a recommendation from this board that would then brought to the city council. Uh, there'd be two readings at the city council for this because it would be a, a change to the ordinance. So it'd be a uh, meeting on the, I believe it's the second and the 16th of May. Yes. Eric, what's the, uh, what's the effect of non-adoption of this? Is it going to affect airport safety, airport operations, or? Right now, JASB already has an ordinance in place with the state that reflects these. So it would be, more of a question for my attorney, but it would be, I think once again, just the fact that the airport is a general benefit to this community in our region, that at least from a staff standpoint, it makes sense to adhere to what the JASB and, and likely the DOT as well has already signed off on. I did attend one of the JASB meetings that, that talks specifically about this that time and um, the benefits to our to city of Hermantown are I felt like we're well worth going through the effort because this has taken a long oh, yeah. years of work to get to this point and to allow uh, Harmontown to still have several of these businesses 
there and not go beyond what what it already is it was it's it was a long process with a lot of work and a lot of thought i really appreciated their work because i think this is a good thing for us we still get to keep what we have um and yet are protecting the the vulnerable which is important and yet still allowing us to use the area and thank you for that beth is and like i said i'd like to echo that I've been with the city six years now, and I've sat actually on the JASB board a little over four years. And um, once again, this has been going on for a number of years, airport zoning within our community that way. And the fact that uh, that JASB and then the state were able to um, basically allow for custom zoning is, is a great benefit. Is if there was standard zoning uh, without our with, within our community, these safety zones would be twice the size, if not more, and be even more restrictive. So um, what JASB was able to accomplish and then with the state signing off on it, it's, um, it really appears to be a good benefit for our community. And once again, to pr protect the existing buildings and just protect things moving forward in the future. Thank you for that. One other question, just to clarify, getting back to uh, Joe's question. So the church was that in zone one? Or is no. that any zone? Right, th that example, if a business was in the zone 2.5 and burns down, can they rebuild? But the 2.5 is, once again, that's, you're asking if it's one of these uses that, if let's say it's in a daycare that. Um, well, then they couldn't build that. But if, is, if it falls within a uses, usage allowed, then it's okay to rebuild. <laughs> Once again, I want to consult a little bit further with the overall ordinance that way, just to find out on um, structures after the fact that way. I don't have an answer for you at this moment. So I guess, yeah, my question would be if Harley or the movie theater skyline burns down. Are, are those are all are not prohibited uses. So then they right. could rebuild. Yes. Okay. It's just that the question would be if there was a daycare that if it, let's say there was a hospital in there today, mm -hmm. it's a retroactive. It was not be affected. If that hospital burned down, the question would be, can that hospital rebuild? But everything like I said at Dix today, Skyline, the uh, movie theater, et cetera, none of those are prohibited uses. Those would all be allowed to rebuild in the case that something did happen. Perfect, thanks. Thank you for that clarification. Commission members, any other questions or comments? We'll circle back to us, but right now we'll open up the floor to a public hearing at 738 in the evening. If anybody would like to speak on this matter, please come on up, state your name and address for the record. Come on up, sir. Please give us your name and address and we'll try and help you out. Hello, Dennis Kaplmeyer, Harley Davidson Sports Center, Stebner Road and 53. A question about uh, <clears throat> restrictions on the size of gatherings, uh, specifically during special events at the business, uh, anything that you're aware of there? None on your property. No, because you fall under the zone 2.5. So that, that does not apply to you. That's only in the zone two. That's on the, the west side, or if you have a chance to see the screen, uh, that's on the, the west side of the property, or right. the west side of the city that way. As far as your business, no, it does not affect it. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wanna come up and ask any questions this evening? Please come up if you do. Come on up, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Nate Rickard, 4878 Trails End Drive. Um, so I got, I got a notice, and I guess I have a few questions, but uh, so that zone three, do you have a map for that? Or? It 
do not have that one in this report here. Uh, you do fall within that zone three. Um, I guess what is your specific questions and maybe I can help you that way with the absence of the map. Uh, so the only, only uh, requirement is just 150 feet. That is correct. So there's no other restrictions within the zone three. Right. My question is then before I didn't fall into a airport zone. Uh, actually you do. I believe that today that you, the, the, the zone three exists today as well. Oh, it does. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there's no additional. Nope. None at all in the zone three. Okay. The, on your, on your website, I was looking, there was an A, B and C. What's, what's that? So what they did was a zone is now zone one. B zone is zone two and the C is zone three. Okay. The C looks like it's a more of a it's almost like an oval on ellipse around the city that way. What they do is they, they take uh within the and the when it parallels the runway, it's one foot, one foot, one mile on both sides of the parallel runways. When it's actually on the landing approach areas, then it flares out to 1.5 miles. Okay. I guess my comment on it is, does it define, when somebody new moves to Hermantown, are they gonna see that I, more profoundly that I'm in an airport zone? Is that gonna make my property value decrease? There's, n there's nothing to, like I said, other than the fact if you're building an extremely tall building, which you couldn't anyway under the zoning, no effect on your property. Okay. I I just look at this triangle on the seat, or it's not really a triangle, it's a cutoff triangle. Was that there before? Uh, I guess, what, what are you looking at? I'm sorry, sir. Sure. Yeah, I believe, no, zone, it was zone C, and it would have been there before. So I guess to answer your question, did it affect you buying or purchasing there? You didn't even know about it, right? So that's what it is again. Yep. Yep. It's just 150 foot. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's what it's, it's always been in place that way. So, so it wasn't, there isn't any change to where I'm at? Nope, not at all with the C zone. Okay. Yep, you still function as you do today. Okay, all right. That's, that's all I had. Sure. Perfect, sir. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to come up and speak? Ask any questions? Not seeing any, we will close the public discussion at 7.42. Commission members, any other questions or comments on this this evening before we look for a motion? And actually, Joe, I'm going to, uh, as I've been reading through this a bit more, under section, I'm looking at the overall airport zoning here. There's section eight, permits and orders to remove use or structure or tree. Uh, number eight, or number B, permit required. So the following structures or uses shall not be allowed in a safety zone two, unless a permit has first been submitted to and granted by the local airport zoning administrator. In that case, it's the city of Hermantown for that jurisdiction. So it's material expansion of an existing structure or use, the permits required, a new structure or uses permit required, an abandoned non-conforming structure, permit required for structure to be reused, rebuilt or replaced, substantially damaged non-conforming structure, permit required to rebuild, repla repair, or replace. Lastly, material change to non in non-conforming use permit required before material change in use can occur. Um, once again, at least the way I'm reading this, yeah. and I would still uh, enact my attorney on that, is number four generally covers that if it was damaged, that you would have to receive, uh, be, be viewed as, let's say a church is damaged in a zone two, it's viewed as a non-conforming, but it can be rebuilt with the permit. Perfect. As Thank I, you for that. As I interpret that. Yep. I would, I would think the same thing from what you read to us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So I'm sorry it took me a roundabout to get to that answer, but uh, it was in this lengthy 50-page document. Hey, Eric, was that section 8B4? It's section B. Um, I'm sorry, section 8. Yeah. Item B and then number four. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Commission members, any other questions or comments this evening? Uh, Sam Clark, I guess just one more follow-up question. With some of these existing structures you mentioned, if this zoning is not adopted, that it could be more restrictive to the surrounding area. I mean, is there any risk to these 
existing businesses if this is not was not accepted? Does that does that make sense? It does. I mean, it would fall under once again that as far as the JASB and the state is concerned, that these safety zones exist. Uh, what is being once again is the city in, in cooperation and understanding of the airport that its staff is doing this to their best interest to adopt this as well. Because at the end of the day, what could have happened under standard zoning would have been so much more restrictive. And so once again, the fact that we are able as a as an airport community to have custom zoning, it, it greatly benefits us. And when you say more restrictive, are you saying like if it, uh, zone two could be as restrictive as a one? No, it wouldn't get that part, but to zone two would extend quite a distance. That at one point it was pushing, uh, right now zone two generally ends at Lindahl Road. Uh, that would extend quite a bit more to the west. And once again, uh, it would, you'd really see it would be in this number three area, right. or runway three, is that under standard zoning, they would have a zone one, a zone two, and a zone three. So what the custom zoning allowed us to do was forego totally the zone two. So under standard zoning, we would have had a one, we had a two that probably would extended almost to Maple Grove, and then it'd be three afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it would have been in much larger land area and much more restrictive under a standard zoning. Uh, Eric, <clears throat> moving on to item C, right below where you were reading, it talks about order to remove use structure or tree. And there, the way I'm reading this says whether application is made for a permit under the subdivision or not, they still may be required to remove the structure. Am I not reading that right? I just, if you just let me read it real quick. Sure. Could you rephrase your question? It's it's really I'm just I'm trying to get the the gist of your question along how that goes with the the ordinance language. Okay. Well, under B, you were, we were talking about if you apply for a permit, that then you can these they won't affect your existing structures if you wanted to rebuild after a fire or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then in reading in C. It says whether application is made for a permit under the subdivision or not, the local airport zoning administrator may by appropriate action compel the owner of any structures use or tree at the owner's expense to lower, remove, reconstruct, or equip the object as may be necessary. And it just sounds like that to me that, that you could still be ordered to remove this structure. Is that not right? Am I reading that wrong? The way I, once again, the way I interpret it, okay. that this still gives the, the city as a local zoning, the power to enact if we need to. Okay. If it is deemed a hazard at that point, so that we still would have at least the authority to do that. So it would be to the city, not the airport authority? Well, the, we, we being the city is, are the local airport zoning administrator. Okay. Any other questions, anybody? Eric, anything else from you? Are you looking for us to make a motion on this this evening? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Commission members not hearing any other uh, questions or comments. We look for a motion on 5D this evening to adopt the uh, zoning ordinance text amendments to the city of Hermantown. Winsoff, I move to adopt 5D. Thank you for that. Can we get a second? Colquist with a second. 
Thank you for that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Not hearing any, motion passes. Thank you very much for that. Moving on this evening, number six, continuing business. Eric, you have anything? No, there's none. Number seven is new business. Anything? No. Number eight, any communications? Uh, not from the city staff, no. Number nine, commission member reports. Nothing from myself, Mr. Colquist. No report. Valerie Ouellette. No report. Samuel Clark. No report. Beth Wensloff. No report. Buckley Simmons. No report. Dante Tomasoni. No report. And Mr. Geiser, are you there? I am, but since I'm uh, not supposed to be acting in official capacity via Zoom, I have no comments. Thank you for that, sir. <laughs> All right, uh, we look for a motion to adjourn. It's currently 7.50 in the evening. Sam Clark with the motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank you, Sam. Can we get a second? Well, I have a second. Thank you for that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.